Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're going to have a look at a Wilex circuit breaker, and uh, more specifically uh, this one. Now these are quite old, these are from the 1980s, and these plugged into the Wilex standard consumer units or fuse boxes, and these essentially replaced the rewirable fuses you could get at the time, and they're the ones with a little uh, button there to uh, set the device, and then you've got that reset button underneath. Now these things say fit into the Wilex fuse boxes, such as uh, this example here, and this particular brown one is uh, pretty old, it's probably 40 plus years old. Originally it would have had the rewire refuses, such as the one in the middle here. And then later on you can get the circuit breakers to plug in as a direct replacement. This particular one is a later version, which has the uh, lever on the front in style of most of the ones you can still buy today. But uh, the other ones uh, tend to have that little button on, say typically in the 1980s. And that would actually just plug straight in in the position where the fuse used to go. And I have done a video on these before. And if you're thinking about buying some of these to replace the fuses, well, don't bother because there really is no point. It's not an upgrade particularly. The only difference is you can reset it more easily than a uh, piece of old fuse wire. But as I said in the other video, if you're going to replace fuse wire all the time, then there's something wrong with the installation. Making it more convenient to reset is not going to actually resolve that problem. But uh, anyway, I've got this one here, which is a 5 amp variety. So that we'll just open it and see what's inside and see if we can get it actually to operate. So here is the device, and it's got the two flat blades which get plugged straight into the front of the Wilex fuse box. And that's pretty much the same as the original fuses would go in there. And originally this was held together with two steel pins here to actually remove those so we can open it. And on the front of the device here they're fairly straightforward. You've just got the large button here, which in this case has 5 amps marked on the front and it's white coloured. And that matches the colouring of the fuse range. And basically you just press that in. That would switch on the circuit breaker, and then switch off. It's just a question of pressing the little red button there so the front pops out. And so you could get these as uh, allegedly an upgrade to the original fuses, but uh, really the only benefit was they were much easier to reset. Not particularly uh, any kind of upgrade in terms of safety. And one problem with these is that the little red button protrudes there, so when you had this under your stairs and there was loads of coats and other junk hanging up, anything that just brushed against this would of course cause it to switch off. And there were some plastic covers you could get, which basically just slid over the whole thing and had sort of a raised section which uh, prevented the button from being pressed. I do have a picture of those, I haven't actually got any of those here, but uh, they were fairly unusual. But nevertheless you could get those to avoid the problem of it being uh, just turned off accidentally. Now these are actually not made by Wilex, despite the fact that they are uh, designed to fit in the Wilex units. And if you have a look on the side here, uh, you can see the actual manufacturer which actually stops. And this is a Type B circuit breaker, made in England now. I'm not really sure whether Stotts actually made these, or it says here it's just made under licence, but uh, nevertheless they're not uh, generally actually made by Wilex. And you can still buy equivalents to this today, though, so they're more usually the uh, levering type, as we've got here. And I say that you can still plug them in, but uh, there's really not a great deal of point in doing so. So uh, let's see what we've got inside this one. Uh, so I've removed the uh, two metal pins here already. They're basically threaded screws that go down and the uh, top is uh, rounded off. So a bit of uh, breakage occurring there to remove it. So if we uh, just remove the cover here. So there we have the actual mechanism. And in the actual casing here we've got the little red button, which is simply a little piece of red plastic there, just loosely placed in the hole. And at the top here we've actually got the uh, three plates, which is effectively the arc chamber. And that's used to dissipate any energy within the arc when the contacts open. And you notice how small they are, there's only three of those. And in a previous video we opened a uh, more modern circuit breaker, there was a whole big rack of them, it's sort of an inch or so wide. But here we've only got those three. And uh, this really highlights one issue with these circuit breakers in that their braking capacity is actually fairly low, considerably lower than uh, modern ones would be. But uh, I say it's got the three plates in the top there. And those are actually loose, they're simply just pieces of uh, steel just slotted in the top there. Now here's the breaker itself, and we've got the two terminals here, one of which is the power in and the other the power going out. And so those are basically the same arrangement as the original fuse would have been. And inside here we've got this uh, big tab at the top, which is basically the arc runner, and that's basically just used to direct the arc forward and into the casing where those three little arc plates were, so basically uh, dissipating the energy in the arc along that into those three plates. The contact gap is here at the top, and this is currently in the open position, 
And if I just press the uh, plunger in, we'll see that that will close together and then latch in place. So there's your contact gap. And then the little red button here actually just presses against the middle piece of that metal. So when that's pressed in, then the thing will just spring open. It's actually sort of pressing it uh, downwards slightly. So notice quite a big gap on the contacts there. And basically that's what you want, and you want it to open as quickly as possible to obviously minimise any kind of arcing that you would get there. So again, in the closed position, and then the button basically just presses on this angled piece so that it will spring open. Now the current path on these things is essentially in at the bottom here on this uh, bottom blade. And that just comes straight through on the back here. And that goes through onto that little connection here. And then through this piece here at the bottom, which has got this sort of insulating material on it. And at this end here, it actually goes up into the coil there. And then just around around the former there. And then the other end of the coil comes across at the bottom here. And see so it turns onto that strip, which is just wound a couple of times around there goes along here and then kind of comes out this side and you've got this tab here just soldered on and then the current will just go through there onto this whole brass section here and that actually forms the contact at the top and then when closed it just presses onto the other contact there which goes straight out the back on the upper terminal. Now the rest of the mechanism here is purely associated with actually latching the button closed and causing the contacts to spring open when the thing is tripped. And the trip can either be the button just pushing this down, or in the case of a short circuit, you have a magnetic field here which will attract that down and therefore cause the thing to switch off. And the bit at the bottom here, this should actually bend when a current is passed through, and that's uh, many for overloads. That will take a bit longer to operate because it's on a kind of a thermal thing. And again, that should cause this whole piece to bend downwards. And because of this hooked piece on the back here, Again, it will achieve the same thing by basically pulling the mechanism down. So if that was to bend down there, then we should see it to just pull it enough to cause it to trip. Now we'll actually see if we can get this to do this with some current going through it, and at least confirm that's how the thing operates. So we'll put this in a testing uh, fixture and see uh, what we can get working. Now this is a side view of the circuit breaker, and we've got the power coming in at the back in the usual fashion. And you can see at the bottom there, I've got that strip with a little magnetic coil on the end of it. And that should be the thing which should bend when power is applied. Now this is a 5 amp circuit breaker, so that means that if you applied 5 amps there, it should have no problem in holding that indefinitely. So we'll turn it up to 5, and then obviously increase the current above that and see if the strip bends or not. So it's starting there with just about 1.2 amps or so, so we'll just uh, slowly increase and see what happens. So just over five there, and I say the breaker should be able to hold this uh, perfectly well because bear in mind it's a five amp breaker. This is pretty much what it's designed to do. So just over nine there, and you see the strip is slowly bending down just towards the right hand side there. See it's actually now a bit lower than it was before. And bearing in mind these thermal things do take a while to actually work, and there it goes, just uh, tripped over there. And I say it takes a while to actually work because of course it's a heating effect, so obviously it takes a few moments for the heat to actually cause the strip to bend. I saw that tripped out there, and again it has obviously now disconnected the power, so that's now dropped back to zero. Now I'll just reset there, and uh, bearing in mind again it takes a few moments for this to cool, so uh, wait for that to cool back there, and again the brake is now in the closed position. So just switch on the power again. Now just around the 5 amps mark there, and bearing in mind say the breaker should be able to hold this indefinitely, bearing in mind it's a 5 amp breaker, and though we're slightly over 5 there, so at 5.2, that shouldn't actually cause any problem, as uh, these types of circuit breakers do not instantly trip once they get to the limit on the front of the device. Now if it will just turn up to around 7, And then we'll just see if the strip does actually bend downwards. You can just about see it slowly moving down there. And 
that's around 8 amps there. And again, that's enough to trip the device. Now this time I've left the current set at what it was previously. And again, we've waited for this thing to cool down a bit. And I've gone in much closer, so I'm going to turn the current on at that around the 8 amp mark. And then we should see it start to bend straight away. And again, then trip the circuit breaker. So say 8 amps is on there. As the device tripped. Now this time I'll try it starting at a much higher level, which would cause it to bend and trip considerably more quickly. So just under 12 amps there. So look there, a Wilex circuit breaker, and that particular one probably from the 1980s, and that sort of push button style with the little reset button underneath. And you notice that it took quite a long time to actually trip, even when the current applied was more than double the rating of the breaker, that's a 5 amp one in this case. And that's entirely normal and expected, because all breakers with a thermal element, you're going to have to rely on the time it takes to heat up that metal strip and therefore trip the device. And the same would actually apply with a normal fuse, which has the rewirable piece of fuse wire in it. And again, you're having to wait for that fuse wire to heat up and melt through in that case. So a delay of several seconds, or many tens of seconds if it's a small overload, entirely normal and exactly what you would expect. And the situation with short circuits is considerably different, and it's got that magnetic part. And in the case of a short circuit, you're basically shorting out the main supply, so for a short time you're going to get to hundreds or even a couple of thousand amps flowing there, and that's more than plenty to cause the thing to pretty much instantaneously trip with the magnetic force just pulling down on the metal tripping bar. And for a fuse, the uh, same thing applies really, because if you put several thousand amps through a very thin piece of fuse wire, it's basically going to vaporise and disappear almost instantly, disconnecting the circuit. But until next time, thanks for watching.